We started this series with creating all of the graphics ourselves, but more recently we've looked at how you can use a vector based graphic program to create the graphics for you and then export the SVG code. I did it intentionally in that order because I think it's useful to really understand the way SVG graphics work before you use a graphic software and then before you actually start playing with the code that it kicks out. So having some idea of what you're looking at is helpful. Using just a plain text editor like text edit does work, but there are significantly better ways to do it. Similar to starting with just the code instead of the graphic software, I think using the plain text editor and then moving to more useful tools is also helpful because you start to appreciate the features and stuff that it does for you. So I've created this graphic here. And if I move the layers panel in, you can see sort of what I've done. I have this whole thing inside of a clipping mask. So that way the art doesn't go off the artboard. And inside of there, I've got different elements that do different things, including some groups like this flower bed here, which is composed of other elements, a window, a door, which has a couple elements in there, the house itself, which has a couple subgroups, like the shadow and the walls and the roof, and more shadows on the ground, the hills, the sun, the sky, right? So that's what I have here. It's not super amazing, but um, I wanted a a little bit more complex of an image than some of the ones we've been working with so far, just to sort of show some of these tools. So if I save this as an SVG file, we can call it house or something like that. And I'm just gonna leave the default in here. There's some other stuff we can do with this too, but I'll talk about that in another video. Now on my desktop, I have this house.svg. It's showing a little strangely. Let's see. Okay, so it's working. Peter doesn't seem to like the thumbnail for it, but that's okay. So we can view this in text edit as we have done in the past. And we can see the code here, right? And it's it's okay. There's um there is some weird stuff in here. But for the most part, you know, you get the idea of sort of what you're looking at. We've got some gradients. Actually I used quite a few gradients. We've got some polygons. Every now and then you can see one of these group IDs. So when I made stuff into groups, I named them. I named some of my individual objects as well. Like I think I named the sun and the sky. So that should be towards the start. So here's the hills. That's probably the sun there, which it looks like I didn't bother naming. But you get the idea. So this isn't super legible, right? It's a little difficult to read through. There are other tools you can use. So the first one I want to talk about is Brackets. Brackets is a lightweight code editor for web languages. So like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, stuff like that. It is made by Adobe. It is open source. It's not as sophisticated and as feature heavy as some of their Creative Cloud tools, but it's free and doesn't require a subscription, so that's nice. So you can download it. It should serve you the correct installer here, but if it doesn't for some reason, you can click other downloads and choose the correct one from GitHub. So I'm gonna go ahead and open in brackets. And you should see something like this. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit just to make it easier to see. So the very first thing you should notice is your text is in color, right? So this is syntax highlighting. If you're not familiar with working with code, this is a pretty standard thing in code editors. So it helps you very quickly determine what you're looking at. So all of the elements are in blue, attributes are in green, and the actual value of that attribute is in orange. So it allows you to pretty quickly know where to look. And, and as you start to use it, as you start to use it, your brain starts to recognize that pattern and it really speeds up sort of the reading and searching through process. Now on the bottom of the screen down here, we have some different things. Perhaps most importantly is this SVG type here. So it does recognize that we are using an SVG file. On the bottom left side, it shows where the cursor is currently set. So you can see it jumps from line to line and column to column as I click through. 
It also shows the total number of lines. So this SVG file is made up of 192 lines of code. Now as I'm clicking on these different things, you can see that it highlights them in green. If it's an individual element that has no closing tag, there's just one there. But if there's two tags, like this defs element here with a closing tag, it highlights both. Just to give you a visual cue of where that tag is being closed or open, depending on which one you clicked on. On the left side here, we have line numbers, which is nice. And we also occasionally have these little triangles. These little triangles allow you to collapse code. So that way you don't have to look at things that maybe you don't currently need to look at. And that can help too with just sort of the visual clutter. Another cool thing about using a code editor is it will automatically create white space like for you. And the other thing is not only does it create white space for you, it will also like predict what you're wanting to create. So like for example, let's just go down to the bottom. And uh, I'm just going to add a rectangle element here. So if I start typing, you can see it's already guessing that I want a rect element just from the RE. So that's kind of cool. And then it'll even start giving me like possible attributes that I'm looking for. Now, not always necessarily what I want, like it's only going down to O. But if I start typing in an attribute, it will also like guess what I might want. So like width and height. And so it can do some pretty cool things. So fill and here it will give me the named colors although only so many, but once again, I can start typing and it will predict what I might want based on that. So it's pretty cool. The other thing is when you close the element, it will also create the closing tag for you if you need one. Now we talked about how rect is closed within the tag itself and that's fine and it will recognize that. If you don't close it that way, it will create a closing tag for you. And you can close shapes and stuff like this as well, which we will see in an upcoming video. But I didn't really mention it before because it hadn't been important before. So if I save this and I open it, we should have a nice rectangle covering a big chunk of it. There we go. Fantastic. That's what I wanted, isn't it? Anyway, I'll just go ahead and remove that. As you're clicking through some of these, another thing that I think is pretty cool, if you hover or click on one of these hex values, like this here, this color code, it will actually show you what color that is. And if we tell it quick edit, or on a Mac, command E, you can actually re-choose what color you want from a color picker, and it will modify that right in there, which is pretty cool and pretty efficient. Now you could reopen this in Illustrator, but if you've started modifying your code and adding in some other stuff, Illustrator is going to remove some of that and reformat it the way that it likes it. So being able to do this in a code editor is a nice feature. Now, one of the really cool things about brackets and about when brackets came out was that it actually allowed you to edit things live. So as you were making changes, you could see it in the file itself. Now that support was for like HTML documents, web pages, but not SVG. And so we can see that here, and we can try to press OK, but see it specifically says HTML file, and if we try it, we get an error. Like, there is no index.html file in the project, so it's not happy about that. Now you might say, what if we embed that in an index.html file, right? So we've talked about doing that, and that it's really not very difficult to do, right? So if I quickly just create a new.html file. I'm just going to right click over here in the menu and tell it to save as an index.html and I will put this on my desktop. Right, so now we have that there. I can actually switch this to my desktop since that's where I've just put that and we can see I have a few other files on here but we've we've got these two here. If I double click, that will move it up to the working files like it was. There we go. And I can just quickly make this into an HTML file and see if it works. So I'll just copy and paste that there. 
And if I hit live preview now. Okay, so it's showing. And if I make a modification, so like maybe if I find the door, I'm just going to do command F and type in door. There's door. And let's see. So here's a stop color. And so I'll do command E for quick edit and maybe like let's change it to green. All right. And then we'll change this one to green as well. All right, so they're both green, and it's not live edit. It's not changing it. The door is not green. So even trying to stick it in here, like that changed. Did you see? So I wrote hello there, and that automatically changed. So live preview doesn't work with SVG, even if I embed it into an HTML file. I'll go ahead and not save and go back to my SVG file. That being said, Brackets does support extensions. And there is an extension for SVG Preview made for Brackets, but it's been a few years since it's been updated. But we can go ahead and give it a shot. So here's the newest version from three years ago. And the readme says to click File Extension Manager, select Available, and search for this extension. So let's see what happens. So File Extension Manager, Available, well, whenever you're ready, Available, SVG. And here it is right here. So we can hit Install. It says Install was successful. And now, as soon as we jumped back to house.svg, you can see that we actually have a live preview right here. Now, it's not perfect. Look what it did to my door handle. So my door handle had something else going on with it. If I jump back to Illustrator and I click on the door handle, well, if I double click enough to actually get to the door handle, here in Appearance, if I make this a little bit larger, I have a drop shadow in here. So that's an additional effect that works a little differently. If I go ahead and remove that, and if I probably save it now, it'll probably work a little better. Yeah, go ahead and continue. All right, there we go. So now that little weirdness around the door handle has disappeared because that was being caused by that weird shadow effect. It didn't know how to render that. But now if I go in here and I modify stuff, like let's find my door again. So Command F, door, there it is. Here's that color. Command E to go to the quick edit. Look at that. It instantly updates that graphic. And that's pretty cool. And that can save you quite a bit of time when you're wanting to do some little tweaks in the SVG code itself. One other really cool aspect of this plugin for brackets is that this is actually somewhat interactive. I can actually click on elements of this preview and it will take me to where that is in the code so like if i want to modify the sun i can click on that and it takes me right to it now the fill itself is a gradient and so i can't easily modify the gradient from there i do have to go and find the gradient but it's still cool that i could modify like the location or some of these other elements quickly and easily just by like clicking on the element itself so clicking on any part of these will take me to where that is now, my SVG does have a few little issues because I have some things layered here. So this side of the house is actually two polygons. I have this one here, which is a gradient, creating some shadow, but there's actually one underneath it as well. So like, if I do something weird and like change that way over there, like you can see how it's stretched out over there. So I'm actually using two right on top of each other. So depending on how your SVG is made, it can only do so much, right? So like, it's so like modifying that there, this is that part, but if I click on right above it, right where I just sort of moved it from, you can see there is the other chunk there. So, you know, just a few things to be aware. But it's still a really cool option. And you do have a few things up here that I didn't really bother to worry about. If you want your preview to be smaller, you can zoom out 
and you can zoom in as well, but only up to 